Good afternoon. Welcome to Coronavirus in Our Mental Health. Today is November 23rd, 2022. Uh, and we've got a great show for you. We've got the joy of bicycle riding, which is uh, great. And we've got a couple of wonderful guests with us. But first, let me talk about the coronavirus update. Now, it's good news this week. Uh, there are four big ones that I look at every week. I look at them from Hawaii and I look at them from the U.S. And those big ones are the average number of new cases per day. Uh, they're the positive, uh, you know, the coronavirus positives. Uh, entries into the ICU, and deaths. Those are the four big ones. And if we look at the national figures, and these figures are coming to us from the New York Times uh, with the support from the Department of Health, uh, the U.S. is up in all four categories slightly. Uh, it could be a lot worse because we're coming up in the holidays, and I'm worried about this increasing, but uh, it's going up. And we need to be aware of that. Now, on the other hand, if you take a look at the average new cases in Hawaii, we're slightly down in that. And if you look at the other three that I was talking about, the positive rate, uh, the entries into ICU and the deaths, we are significantly down from two weeks ago. So we're doing well. There's a caveat. There always is a caveat to say, yes, but, and that is the holidays are coming. And I think that's the reason that the U.S. is up slightly. Uh, and the holidays, well, it starts tomorrow. And I'm hoping everybody's going to have a great Thanksgiving tomorrow. It's just, uh, it, and I hope it's going to be a safe Thanksgiving and a delicious one. Uh, okay. So the other part of it is that I need to talk about is the two other two things I'm tracking are vaccinations and boosters. Both of these uh, were doing much, much better than the uh, than the national average. We've got 81% of the people here in the island vaccinated, which is great, except that also means that 19% of the people in the islands have not been vaccinated, are not protected. Now, the booster shots, 47% of the people here in Hawaii have had their booster shots. Again, significantly better than the mainland. But that means that over half our people had not have, did not have the boosters, including that really critical booster that's of the Omicron variant, B5 and B4. Uh, that booster helps protect us against these very infectious uh, variants. So that's the real takeaway from all this is, one, what I've been talking about for the last month or so, go ahead and get that booster. Make yourself safe. Make yourself safe for other people. The other thing I just want to mention that I haven't talked about before is middle masking. We tend to look at masking as being one or the other. We're either masks or we're not masks. Well, my suggestion to you is that we be, be middle masked. We mask sometimes, but we don't have to at other times. The times we really need to mask is when we're with big groups with a lot of people that we don't know. And that includes shopping, holiday shopping and things like that, and big parties and big get togethers and celebrations. So please consider masking during that. And the other thing is public transportation. Uh, when we're taking public transportation, that means we're in very close quarters with a number of people that we don't know, and oftentimes the ventilation system is not the best. So please take that away with you as far as the coronavirus stuff. Uh, okay, that takes care of coronavirus update. Let's get to the joy of bicycle riding. And I am very fortunate to have uh, Steve Katz and Tam Ramon. Uh, they've both been on the show with me before, but separately. And this is the first time I'm able to have them together. And not only that, but they're here. It's the, my first time for two people being guests. And so it's quite a special time. And these are special people who are are going to tell us a lot about the joy of bicycling. Welcome to the show, you two. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Ken. <laughs> now, one of the things about uh, Steve and Tamara is that they're a power couple, I think. Uh, Steve, a psychologist, and Tamara, an artist and teacher. And so when they look at joy, they look at it from both the external standpoint, from the artist standpoint, and also the internal, the psychological standpoint. So we get it. We get both views from this powerful couple here. And uh, I have to tell you, they've been bicycling. I mean, I think of myself as a bicyclist, but I am nothing compared to these two and where they've been and what they've experienced. Um, 
they've been around the world, they've been to Europe, they've been so many places. Uh, and we'll get to those. But first, uh, I want to ask them to start off and tell us a little bit of the advantages of seeing Hawaii, for instance, on a bicycle rather than taking a car or public transportation or whatever. Tell us tell us about the joys of bicycle riding in general. Ladies first, Tamara. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've always thought that um, the pace of travel on a bicycle is really ideal. You get to cover more ground than you can walking, but you are not whizzing by like you are in a car. And you're also, the environment around you is very, um, you know, you're right in the middle of the environment. You're not separated from what you're traveling through. Um, there's no windows to roll down. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that those are the advantages I like. And of course, you're getting exercise at the same time, moving your body and um, and getting some physical benefit. Well, also, if you pass something that's worth stopping for, you're right there. You know, you don't have to look for a parking spot. You don't have to look for the closest highway exit. You know, you can see everybody. You're up close. And one of the advantages that uh, we used an awful lot on our last trip was uh, if you get lost, there's somebody right there next to you. <laughs> you can pull over and say, uh, how do we get to so-and-so? You know, and... Uh, yeah, we did that, I would say, on the last trip, at least two, three times a day, Tamara. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it, this and the pace of it is just so much better. You know, one of the things that really uh, impressed me was a number of years ago. Actually, it seems just like yesterday, but uh, these two went off on <clears throat> took a full year off to go around the world on their bicycles. Uh, and that was just something way beyond my comprehension of, of trying something like that. It was just, it made me very, very envious. And uh, if we can talk a little bit about that, tell us about what it was like to not, to leave Hawaii and then tackle the whole world uh, on a bicycle. Well, I'll, I'll go first, Tamara, this time, okay. because I just wanted to say like, the way it happened was on a bicycle ride. The, the idea for it came about, we were doing the century ride here in Hawaii. Uh, we weren't even dating yet. And uh, we found ourselves alone on a beautiful stretch of the century ride next to the Ko'olaus in Waimanalo. And, um, you know, I said something like, so what do you want to do with your life? And she said, well, you know, I'd kind of like to meet somebody eventually, settle down and she said, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to ride my bicycle around the world. And she said, I can do that. And <laughs> it just like blew my mind. And, you know, I just like put that in my head and said, all right, I, I got to come back to this one later. <laughs> <laughs> and then after we were married a few years, I said, well, you know, so what are we going to do? Are we going to go around the world on our bikes? And uh, I'll let you take it from there, Tamara. Yeah. And um so, I mean, originally I had thought maybe we'd do a little bike trip here or there, you know, every year, maybe do a little section of it. But it, it was clear it was going to take us 79 years to go around the world that way. <laughs> so we did start planning to do the whole thing and um, and to take off a year. That's what we thought we would do. Um, and we I don't know. There was a there was a lot of months of planning and figuring out the best way to do things. Um, we ended up not getting an around the world air ticket. We just got one way tickets as we needed them, um, which I'm glad we did. It gave us a lot more flexibility, uh, and that was important in part because not so far into the trip, maybe about a month and a half or two months, I fell off my bike and had a major injury and um, which needed surgery. <laughs> and I had torn my, the ACL in my knee. And um, <clears throat> we ended up, I ended up having surgery in Bangkok to fix it. And we decided to continue traveling, although I could not ride a bike for three or four months after that. Um, but we did end the, the trip bicycling again. Um, we had started in Australia and by the time, and that's where my injury happened. And then by the time I could ride again, we were in Hungary. So, <laughs> you know, a couple seasons later, we were bicycling down the Danube. Um, 
but it was really, you know, it, the trip took a lot of unexpected turns, but we just decided to keep going. Yeah, she was amazing. I mean, she never, she never once said, you know, let's go home after that injury happened. And uh, we persevered. And I remember the first time she was back on a bike was in uh, Tel Aviv. We had already mailed our bikes back, our own bikes. So we rented those, you know, city bikes in Tel Aviv. And uh, I remember she was so thrilled to be able to ride up and down the boardwalk in Tel Aviv. It was like she had just learned how to ride a bike again. Yeah, that was great. It was throwing. <laughs> I mean, there was it's something about the unpredictability, the flexibility in being on a bike that uh, is unbeatable. Um and, and it's also the independence. I mean, we have these bikes called Bike Fridays. And when you buy them, you buy them with a piece of Samsonite luggage that converts into a trailer. So you ride your bicycle to the airport and you're, you put a backpack with your clothes in the trailer. When you get to the airport, you take the, suit, the backpack out, fold up the bike, put it into the trailer which and take off the wheels. And now you've got a piece of Samsonite luggage that checks in because it only weighs 49 pounds. So it's, you're not even overweight. You put it on the plane. When you get you know, to Sydney, Australia, like we did, you reverse the process, put the wheels back on, take your backpack off, put the clothes in there, and the trailer gets pulled along after you. And so you're really independent. Um, you can carry your own stuff uh, you like you know like one of those like a hermit crab <laughs> carrying <laughs> a shell <laughs> that sounds phenomenal it sounds great the interesting thing is that uh you followed that up with uh, a trip this summer to europe uh bicycling and i uh, guess what i was you know we sort of fast forward to that time of, of your bicycle trip uh this summer and I was wondering, uh, you probably saw some things that you saw on the around the world, uh, but also probably some new things. So visiting old places and finding new places. Is that how that trip this in Europe went today, this um, uh, last summer? It was actually mostly new places because we started in Amsterdam, which both of us had separately been to Amsterdam in the past. But um, all our riding really was in the countryside through the Netherlands and neither of us had been there before. And it was really, um, all of it was pretty new and fresh. Yeah. And Netherlands is like, if you like to ride a bike, first of all, it's flat. <laughs> so you've got that advantage, but also there are bicycle routes away from the traffic all throughout the country and they're, they're numbered. And uh, this time we didn't take our bike Fridays, but we rented bikes from a bike tour company. And we had the luxury of riding in the daytime from one town to the next. And when we'd start out the next morning, you leave your luggage at the hotel. They pick it up and take it to your next destination. So you're just riding with a little day pack at most. And so that was really luxurious. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, we just saw windmills and canals and bridges and ferries. And we ended up in, from Amsterdam, we went, ended up in Bruges or Brugge, as they say. And um, that's got to be one of the most beautiful towns anywhere in the world. It's just amazing. And we of course, have, the food. <laughs> yeah, the food. We have some photos if you want to share those. So Absolutely. This first one is us with the windmill in the background. And um, it was a thrill to actually see a real live windmill. <laughs> we saw many on our route. <laughs> yeah, both the ancient kind and the, the high-tech modern ones. Yeah. Um, this was the town of Gouda, where Gouda cheese comes from. And uh, we just happened to be there when a, a little local, you know, amusement fair was going on. <laughs> This is a really typical Dutch bridge. Uh, of course, there's lots of water and canals and all kinds of bridges. Um, and we had been, when we were in um, Amsterdam, we had gone to the Van Gogh Museum and he painted 
that style of bridge, which is still operational. Wow. We, we also, because there is so much water, we went over a number of ferries. Some, this one I think had cars on it as well, but this one was um, only for bicyclists and pedestrians. You could have 12 bikes on it. <laughs> uh, and it, it just allowed you not to have to ride a long way around a piece of water. And the last photo there is a town called Veer in, in the Netherlands. And it was fairly close to the end of our trip. Um, this was a, a town that had gotten really rich with wool trading in the, um, you know, in the Renaissance period. Anyway, it was fun to discover all these old historic places and um, see how they look today. And a lot of it still looks very similar to what it was centuries ago. While I'm thinking of it, I'd like to put on a little plug for an organization that most people never heard of called warmshowers.org, I believe. And it's sort of like an Airbnb for bicyclists, but it's free. So we've hosted people who are riding their bikes around the world or just riding to Hawaii. We've hosted them in our house. And when we did our trip around the world, I think uh, before we left the country, we stayed at a warm showers place in Washington State. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's an amazing organization. I mean, just people open up their homes because you, you have this kinship with other cyclists and uh, they tend to be really interesting, wow. intelligent people. <laughs> well, how about, uh, you know, I, I'm really happy that you brought those pictures. That's great. Uh, and the trip just sounds wonderful. It sort of leads me to my next question, which was, uh, I wanted to ask both of you, what was your, what was one of your favorite moments on a bicycle? One that, you know, when you're looking back at all the bicycle trips that you took, one of those that really stands out and maybe sort of, you know, the first thing that comes to your mind and say, wow, that was, that was a trip. I um I remember the first day that we started out riding from uh, Vienna. So this was after on our big world trip after my knee had healed up again, and um, I realized I could ride. And so we rented bikes in Vienna because by then we shipped our own bikes home. <laughs> and uh, that first day we just ended up riding out through this large park in Vienna and getting on this track that would head us down the Danube all the way to Budapest. And um, that first day, it was just lovely. It was just when spring was beginning. And each day of that ride toward Budapest, it seemed like spring was unfolding right before us. The trees were bursting with color and animals were out. And the, every day, the, warm, the air was warmer. And it was just, it was like being reborn again. <laughs> Wow. <clears throat> and that, that trip along the Danube, um, I, I mean, I never knew until we did that, that all along the Danube, that stretch, at least that we did from Vienna to Budapest, there are natural hot springs in the ground. And people in each of the towns sort of use those hot springs to create swimming pools from the natural hot springs. And uh, or like the hotel would have a swimming pool that's made from that. And um, we used uh, two or three of them at least. And uh, it, it was just wonderful. I mean, to ride your bike in the daytime and then jump into uh, a natural hot spring pool at night. I I felt like a, like a king. I really did. And, you know, it. The irony is it's a lot less than, you know, booking a cruise. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's wonderful to hear you talk about uh, the Danube because, you know, I think it's one of the best known rivers in the world. And uh, from the Blue Danube, the music, and uh, I've never had the opportunity to be close to it. Um, and to hear you talk about it just is uh makes me feel so good, especially because so many of the great rivers of the earth have been polluted, are in a bad shape. And it just sounds like the Blue Danube is still there 
and still romantic and still making you feel wonderful. Uh, thank you for sharing that. That was that was beautiful. The other thing is um, not necessarily related to bicycling. I mean, we love to travel on bikes, but as part of that round the world trip, one place we went without our bikes was Kiev mm -hmm. in 2000. Third, was that 13 already? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, we went there mostly because that's the city where my grandfather was from. And I just wanted to see it. I didn't know any of the people there. I didn't know exactly where. But it makes connections that are lifelong. We stayed with a woman in Kiev. She had an apartment, a tiny little one-bedroom apartment with her teenage daughter. She was so kind to us. She so she and her daughter separately gave us tours of the city, made sure we got tours, uh, went to the ballet and the opera. And so when this war broke out, it was really personal for me, you know, and I found a way to write to her to make sure she was okay. And I was really relieved to find out she'd gotten out of the country. She First she went to Poland and then she went to Switzerland with her daughter. But now I keep thinking about her because I don't know if she went back when it was safe again in Kiev, and now it seems like it's not safe again. But I think that that is such an important thing. Uh, if if you know people who live somewhere and they mean something to you, you're much less likely to go to war with them. <laughs> and uh, because it's like they're part of your family. Absolutely. You know, I, I really appreciate you sharing that because we're not just part of a state or a country. We're part of a world. Uh, and everybody in that world is our neighbor. And uh, everybody in this world is somebody we care about. And I think the war has really shown this, uh, that we're no longer disconnected. Uh, we are so, so connected. And something like the war in Ukraine has just been heartbreaking for so many of us and uh anything that people can do to help in any way uh would be wonderful i really appreciate you you sharing that um we're getting short on time i just wanted to ask you real quick what where would you guys like to go for your next bicycle trip mm. we've talked for a long time about south america um we didn't get to south america on our round the world trip and that's a big big shortcoming um that might be next any yeah, particular place in south america Colombia, but uh maybe uh we can do some biking there yeah <laughs> all right <laughs> uh, uh it is so south america is so huge i can imagine going from north to south oh yeah. we've met people we we had people stay with us through the warm showers thing that uh have gone from mm -hmm the North Pole to the tip of Argentina and Peru. Wow. Uh, and I can't even imagine. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I don't know if it's brilliance or insanity, but it's certainly perseverance. <laughs> <laughs> I have a cousin who lives in Alaska, and right now she's uh, in Antarctica. I don't think you could ride your bike in Antarctica, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure she's she's seeing it. And it's quite an experience because, like I said, she lives in Alaska. So talk about going north to south. You know, it's a it's an amazing world we live in. So, yeah. And I, I want to put in a plug for a Hawaii Bicycle League. They're a great group to support to make uh, cycling uh, safer in Hawaii. Uh, this is still not one of the greatest places to bike because people here just aren't used to it still. I mean, we have a few more bike lanes than we used to have, but uh, there's, there's it's it can be very dangerous and you got to be really careful. Yeah, it was pretty eye opening bicycling in the Netherlands where everybody cycles and there's so many paths that are just dedicated to bicyclists and you'll see all every age of person out there. You know, grandmothers to little tykes, and they're just whizzing along, and that's that's just how they get along. You know, to wherever they want to go every day. Yeah, you oh, know, we have all of the uh, a lot of the pictures from our around the world trip on a Tumblr site called Roll Around the World. 
www.tumblr.com if people watching want to see pictures. All right. That sounds great. You know, I wanted to comment on what you were saying about uh, bicycling here in Hawaii. Um, I think I mentioned earlier that I bicycled, did my bicycling uh, in the 70s uh, with around the island trips. And uh, it was different. You know, I mean, we, yeah, we had traffic, but it wasn't as much traffic. And it wasn't uh, people. There was there was a lot of aloha in the 70s. Yeah. <laughs> I can I can remember uh, we were biking up Haleakala on Maui, and uh, we were about halfway there, and we were tired. I mean, you know, biking up Haleakala, uh, and this uh, truck pulled over. This uh, you know, uh, not a big truck, but you know, one with a flatbed in the back. And the guy offered to, uh, you know, to take us up to our stop where we were going. You know, we we're actually we we're going to stay uh, at a at a friend's place uh, midway up the thing. And he offered to take us. And it was just the most wonderful thing, you know. So, you know, I was with a group of about eight people and we all loaded our bikes on the on the, uh, you know, in the back. And uh, he took us right up to where we were going. And I never forgot that. I never forgot that aloha where we were, you know, he just pulled over and said, would you guys like a lift? <laughs> I guess he could see our tongues hanging out. I guess that was, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think we've lost some of that. I mean, there's a lot of aloha in this state and which I'm internally grateful for, but uh, it seems like with bicycling, uh, it is more dangerous today and people are, it's a little scarier and uh, I don't see as much of that, at least on the road that, type of aloha. I think we could do better on that. Thanks for bringing that up. Any last uh, minute words? We're down to about the end. Uh, last thoughts, uh, Tamara, Steve, about bicycling or anything uh, that you've uh, thought of as we've gone along? Just that it makes me happy. It's like mm -hmm. any kind of exercise, but it seems to be the perfect speed. Like walking is wonderful and healthy, but it's kind of slow. You can't see as many places. Uh, a bike is that middle ground between a car and walking that just seems perfect. You know, you're right there among everybody. And uh, I've been riding a bike since I'm four years old. And it, every time I get on a bike, it makes me happy. <laughs> That's great. Deborah, any last minute thoughts? Oh, I just, I hope I can do it for a long, long time to come. Wow. Terrific. I wanted to thank you guys, especially for being on. It's such a... <sighs> You know, there's so many things not to be happy about in the world today. And uh, being with you two and hearing the happiness uh, and the joy that you got from, from being on a bicycle and together, uh, that was just terrific. And I, I really appreciate and want to thank you for, for being with us today. Thank you, Ken. Thanks, thanks for doing the show. <laughs> and thanks to everybody who's watching. Uh, I'm happy you're out there. And thanks to the people at uh, Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, Haley and Jay and Eric and Michael and all those people who make this show possible. Uh, we're de deeply indebted to you. And to everybody out there, again, I wanted to wish you a happy Thanksgiving, some delicious food, and some wonderful fellowship uh, with the people that you love. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.